Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. Over the past few years, we've seen asset flippers and shady independent developers pull all sorts of shenanigans involving their customers, Steam trading cards, and their own games. It is a poignant reminder that the industry surrounding independent developers relies far more on their relations with their customers than the rest of the industry. It is a stark contrast between the indie market and that of the AAA market to almost be two separate industries in that regard. A kind and receptive developer will garner far more leeway from their customers than those that act like BC Interactive, Digital Homicide, Dentola Studio, Doki in Dallas, and even Alex Maurer. All of those listed are prime examples of industry chicanery along with more than their fair share of self-importance, arrogance, and in some cases delusions of grandeur. Still others could be considered to be abjectly stupid in nearly every regard when it comes to their public actions. Two days ago, it was brought to my attention that the developer of Oath of Genesis, which appears to be a port of an Android game, was causing a fair amount of stir in regards to his recent actions. Now, I will attempt to piece together the series of events as best I can that led up to what has been getting the community for this game into such an uproar. This game was, of course, put through the Steam Greenlight process, and it was successfully greenlit on May 17th of 2016. The developer made use of systems including votes for keys and giveaway bundle deals with sites like Who's Gaming Now? And while those actions are very much against Steam guidelines, Valve has always turned a blind eye to those who engaged in vote botting and votes for keys and even went so far as to promise to create key giveaways as soon as the game was published. This particular developer apparently had found out over a year later that a large number of keys that were traded to vote for key groups and sites were being sold on the gray market. In response to this, the developer has revoked a great many keys, which has led to people that have paid money for those keys, along with those who helped vote boost the game through Greenlight, and even some legitimate Steam purchases, to suddenly find their purchases to be marked as invalid. Also, in spite of the uproar this has caused, the developer doubled down and removed his game from the Steam storefront, and even went so far as to delete the depot files in an attempt to make certain that those with what he claimed to be stolen or fraudulent keys would not be able to download or play the game. This also had the added issue that anyone with a still active license and legitimate key for the game would also not be able to download the game or play it either as the executable was straight up missing, which is a violation of Steam's terms of service. And after further checking, it seems that this is not the first time that the developer has removed the depot files for this particular game, it was in fact the second. This developer, out of a misguided attempt to prevent what he thinks to be key theft, has violated terms of service and has very much poisoned the community against them out of a fundamental lack of understanding as to what was actually going on. The keys being sold were not illegally obtained. They were distributed freely by the developer in order to help promote his game to key distributors like Carl Mundo and Who's Gaming Now. The fact that some people who obtain those keys are now selling them on the gray market sites does not preclude the legitimacy of those keys as they were still handed out for distribution by the developer. And this is the pitfall of votes for keys and key giveaways that these developers fail to recognize. In their zeal to get their games through Greenlight and onto the Steam storefront, they were seemingly blinded to the realities of what it was they were doing. These key giveaway sites don't just give away keys. They of course retain a number of them for sale both on their own storefronts or through other sites like G2A. It is a business, and if you don't understand that, then you will get taken advantage of. These sites don't operate merely out of the goodness of their own heart. They operate for profit, trading a percentage of obtained keys to be sold in exchange for giving others away. And while those keys were not meant for sale, they were provided for distribution, which does make them legitimate, and these developers do not have the right to invalidate those keys simply because they didn't like the idea of someone selling them off instead of using them. On top of that, the distributed keys were beta and press release keys, which were meant to be revoked as there is such a system in place for this developer to do exactly what it is he has been doing. The fact that he did not provide his customers with standard keys was ultimately even more dishonest than Carl Mundo or those key distribution sites have ever been. No matter which way you look at this situation, what this developer has done is wrong, both ethically and otherwise, nearly on every level. I would recommend that those who have suffered a key revocation by this developer report him to Valve for what he has been doing. These actions, while being extremely unethical, are also illegal in the EU, which as Steam is an international company, they must abide by their court ruling that what this developer is doing to customers in the EU is actually theft. The fact that the developer waited a full year before enacting this is highly suspect and a situation that I feel warrants further investigation. Of course, as always, please do feel free to let me know what you think, either about this situation or about the video in general, down in the comments below. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.